Now, it's even worse than that because um, I told you maybe in the storage way, we understood theoretically what kind of gains we will have. When we implemented it, it was a one-to-one -one copy. There was no surprises. With wireless mesh, it was nearly impossible to get the nice results we had on the whiteboard really on the street. And it took a lot of PhDs, a lot of good researchers to find out which knob to twist to get out something like this. Now, not with drones, um, for satellites, there was also is a huge um, research field currently. There's also a lot of interest from the industry in that. There are different papers showing throughput increases of uh, 2x, somebody else shows 20x, 2x, 6x. You can look up the papers. So what makes it so interesting is the pure distance to the satellite. So there's huge latency on that. So everything that is RQ, where you want to repair your losses, is quite useless. Once you get a feedback what happened on the other side, it's already too late. So you need some kind of coding. And um, co they could do coding end to end, but they understood that it's really bad in doing that. So wh where's the problem? So first of all, the very first implementation was um, something from DLR. If you look it up, they wanted to show that they can do the coding in the middle. And they used the simple XOR idea. You remember the XOR with Alice and Bob? So what they did is they had a ground station sending out packets, the other ground station also sending out packets. Now there was no computing. So what they did is they sent down to another ground station all the packets, they code the packet, they get it back, and then they broadcast it. That's totally nonsense. Right? But they just wanted to show if we could do the computing upstairs, then we can get something out of it. So not only that the implementation was not so smart and not so convincing, it's not even the one that you want. This one is the most interesting implementation. So you're sending data from here to here and down here. So encoder, decoder, and you have a recoder here. Do you understand where the benefit for, a, for a, an operator of the satellites is? when you would have a recoder here? I mean, you could do an encoder here and a decoder here and transparently replay it here. What is the problem? So the capacity on the satellite thing is very expensive, very expensive. So if you know that you have no losses here, but you have losses here. Why do you want to create redundancy here and send up the redundancy to the satellite that he can use it? Why not creating the redundancy when it is needed? And why not creating the right amount at the right time? And this 20x that you saw that, that was um, with one satellite um, operator and they really tried it out on one of the things. It's not so easy because these goddamn things are up there. You cannot take them back and put computing power in it. They don't have it yet. So we are waiting now a little bit, put computing power in it. And this will, um, with the next generation, there will be more computing and then we are um, king of town and can maybe implement the network coding there. There are other things what you can do, right? For example, you can send out packets and you can do broadcast, right? And then you can do very simple things with um, combining different packets, A, B, C, right? And they can send um, next or X upstairs if they want. Remember zigzag, very easy X or you can send out X or packets as long as you want. Now, of course, you can do the same with R and C. You don't need the zigzag. You send up the three packets and he will just generate now R and C um, equations on that. Very simple. 